The Damon Runyon Theater. Once again, the Damon Runyon Theater brings you another story by the master storyteller, Damon Runyon. And this one, Broadway financier. And to tell it to you, here is Broadway. Thanks. Once there is a doll by the name of Silk. That is not her real name, but nobody ever thinks of one that fits her better, so that is what we call her. This is the story of how Silk scores over three million bobs from one guy, which is a pretty fair score, considering that she starts from nothing. And how that happens, I will tell you in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Broadway Financier. hear of Silk one night maybe four years ago when a guy gives me a message to go to a knocked out joint on 10th Avenue. There I find Satin Clark, one of the smoothest con men who ever sells a bridge that does not belong to him. But to my surprise, Satin is like I never see him before. Yeah, it's me, Broadway. I'm ready to put my checks back in the rack. Oh, now, Satin, do not talk like that. I know what I'm saying. I got maybe a couple of days, but I got to do something first, and you got to help me. Sure, sure. What do you want me to do? I got a kid, Broadway. A doll. Oh, I never knew this before. Never mind that. Look, keep an eye on her for me. Me? But, Satin, I know nothing at all about keeping eyes on young dolls. You got to. And tell the rest of the boys I'd appreciate it if they'd give you a hand. Oh, look, Satin, she has got relatives. None. An aunt, maybe? No, none. I told you none. All she ever had was me. All she ever... Dad. Yeah, baby. Come on in. You feeling better, Dad? Smooth as satin. Baby, this is Broadway. You hear me talk about him lots of times. Oh, sure. How are you, Broadway? First rate. Her name is Silk, Broadway. Silk? Oh, Silk and satin. Yeah. <laughs> we made a great team... Sit down, Silk. All right, Dad. Now, look, baby. You know I've got maybe a couple of more days. I know. No blubbering? None. Good girl. Now, listen to me. Broadway's going to keep an eye on you for me. He knows everybody. I know. You told me. Mm -hmm. What else did I tell you, baby? Get a sucker before he gets you. What? Satin, is this a way to raise a doll? In this world, yeah. Go ahead, Silk. What else? Take everything you can get and give nothing. And keep what you get. All the time. I forgot that, Broadway. I forgot it, and now look at me. Silk, don't you ever forget it. I won't, Dad. There's only one way you can live in this world and live right. Dog eat dog. When you get a sucker, play him as long as you can, then pull him in and put him in the basket. Satin, this is a young dog. I'm 17. That is ancient. <laughs> She'll do all right. I know I will, Dad. I got a few bucks stashed away, enough to keep her going till she's ready to go out on her own. Silk, I want you to learn every dodge and pitch you can pick up. Holy mackerel, Satin, what are you thinking about? Her, Broadway. Just her. It is four days later that Satin turns in his checks. And I will lay better than six to five that he cons his way through the pearly gates. Although the chances are they will catch up with him and make other arrangements. Well, it is maybe two weeks after Satin dies that Silk comes into Mindy's where I am sitting with an old guy we call Professor D. Hiya, Broadway. Hiya, Professor D. Hello, Silk. Good afternoon, Silk. Sit down. Thanks. Where are you, Amon? At Nathan Detroit's place. What? Silk, you stay away from that crap game. <laughs> Don't worry, Broadway. I wasn't playing. Well, I hope not. But I learned something. Look. You put those away. It is not nice for a doll to be carrying dice. Look, what do you want me to throw? Uh, try an eight, Silk. Five, three. That's an eight. How do you like this? Do it again. What number? Uh, Eleven. Anything else? Who teaches you that? Big Sam. 
Tomorrow, Doc Darrow's going to teach me a few things with cards. This is an education? Do you like to learn these things, Silk? Why not? Dad always said, keep one jump ahead of everybody else and nobody will get ahead of you. You're only 17 and you think that already. I think it. I know it. There are other things besides dice, cards... And horses, Professor? And horses. Silk, that is not nice of you. I never want to hear you talk to the professor like that again. Okay, I'm sorry. Oh, it's all right. I guess you're right, Silk. Who am I to talk? Oh, now, look, Professor. Silk does not mean anything when she says that. I know. But, Silk, there's not much I can teach you in the way of dice or cards. I'm not even very good at picking horses. Ah, oh, forget it. However, I am... I was a professor in a college in Ohio, professor of philosophy. What's that? Philosophy? Well, I suppose it's what might be called an attempt to study life, to try to figure it out. How far did you get? <laughs> Not very far. No one has. I will. How? By sticking to what Dad told me. I think all you got to remember is never go soft. I'm 65, you're only 17. Maybe you've beat me to the answer at that. Maybe. However, I would like to give you something, contribute my little bit toward your education. Sure. What? Well, I have some books I'd like you to read. What about? Oh, lots of things, Silk. Uh, drop around some dime and pick them up. Now, if you'll excuse me, uh, I have an appointment. Uh, goodbye. So long, Bye. Professor. Bye. <laughs> an appointment with a bookie. Now, look at me, Silk. I do not wish to hear you make fun of the old guy ever. And you go to his place and pick up those books he talks about. You have got to learn something else besides how to switch in a pair of tops in a crap game and then pull a slick ace from a deck of cards. Okay, okay. So I'll pick up the books and I'll read them. But they won't change anything because I remember Dad dying in a moth-eaten flat on 10th Avenue because he went soft. Just once. <laughs> Well, Silk does read the books, and she argues with Professor D about them. And she gets smarter and smarter, until it is hard to believe she is only 17. Then she becomes 18 and gets a job in a musical comedy, because she is by no means a crow and can dance and sing more than someone. It is not more than a couple of years later before she is playing bigger parts and her pictures get in all the magazines and papers, and we are very proud of her. Then one night after the show, she comes in Mindy's. Hiya, boys. Oh, hello, Sil. Tired? No, not at all. Say, have you seen Jewelry Joe any place? Yeah, he is here someplace. Let me see. Uh... Oh, yeah, there he is. Oh, come with me, Broadway. I want to see him. Huh? Why? You'll find out. Come on. Excuse us, boys. Take it easy, Sil. See you around, Sil. Why do you wish to see Jewelry Joe? Oh, I just want him to take a look at something. Like what? <laughs> you still worried about me, Broadway? I have got to. I make a promise. It's all right. Oh, hi, Joe. Huh? Oh, Silk, baby. Come on. Sit down. You too, Broadway. Yeah. <laughs> Do me a favor, Joe. Name it. Look over this stuff for me, will you? Hmm. Silk, where do you get that jewelry? Somebody gave it to me. Now, look, you tell me the truth. I am. Somebody uh, gives it to you, huh, Silk? That's right, Joe. Hmm. <laughs> Give it back. What? This stuff is strictly slum. It is not good enough for you, Silk. So. What is the matter with it? Like I say, strictly slum. Cheap. Maybe the whole layout's worth about uh, a C note. <laughs> I thought so. Now, where do you get it? Some Johnny who thinks he's in love with me. Who? His name is Simon Link. But he gives you this stuff. Why do you take it? Because he gave it to me. Why? Because he wanted to. I say, why? <laughs> Don't worry, Broadway. He worships his love, a faraway star, a star no hand may touch. Talk English. I did, from one of the professor's books. What you gonna do with this stuff, Sil? Keep it. Maybe it is only worth a hundred, but it's a start. It's a start. And it turns out that this Simon Link citizen keeps on sending jewelry to Silk because he is more than somewhat overboard about it. Then one night, I and Silk are in Professor D's place when we hear a knock on the door. Now, who could that be? Company, Professor. Oh. Uh, come in, please. Excuse me, but I... Oh. Miss Clark, I've got to talk to you right now. I must. What are you doing here? Who is this, Silk? Simon Link. The citizen who sent you the slope? That's right. I've 
got to talk to you alone, Miss Clark. Please. Please. Shut the door, Professor. Yes. Now, what do you want? Can we be alone? No. How'd you find me? I was told you were here. Please, I've got to talk to you. Look, Silk, uh, the professor and me... We'll stay. This guy has nothing to say you can't hear. Go ahead, you. That jewelry, I, I've got to have it back. What? Or I'll go to jail. What are you talking about? I stole money to buy it. You do what? I work for an investment company. I, I handle money. I thought I could pay it back, but I can't. If I don't get that jewelry back, I'll go to jail. You... <laughs> give it back, please. Take it easy, son. Sit down. Tell her to give it back to me. Silk. No. I didn't know he was helping himself to money. He gave me the jewelry, and it's mine. Well, isn't it? Well, I suppose it is, yes. Look, Simon... Didn't you know you'd get in trouble when you took the money? I thought I could pay it back before they found out. Mr. Alistair will send me to jail. Who's he? He's the head of the firm. Look, it'll kill my mother. Don't give me that. Please, listen to me. No. Silk. Look at him, Broadway. Why should I feel sorry for him? He took a chance knowing what might happen. Well, it happened and it's not my fault. But, Silk... Do the bookies give you back your money when you pick a loser? No. You take a chance and lose. Well, so did this, this, this... I'll kill myself... Oh, no, you won't. I can't go to jail. My mother... She'll come to see you. All right. All right. I think I will be going. I'll walk a piece with you, Broadway. Wait. Yes, Silk? He won't go to jail. No? No. Didn't he say something about Mr. Alistair? So what? So I've heard of Mr. Alistair. He's very wealthy... Likes musical comedies. I think I've seen him sitting down front. What are you thinking about? Broadway, why don't you go see Mr. Alistair tomorrow with me? Might be interesting. <laughs> do, because I feel very sorry for this Simon Link citizen. Now, what happens when we see Mr. Alistair is something I will tell you about in a minute. And now, back to the Damon Runyon Theater and the famous story, Broadway Financier. It is the next morning that I and Silk go to see Mr. Alistair. For the time being, I am her uncle, which is astonishing to me because I never am an uncle and do not like the way I get to be this one. But we are in Mr. Alistair's office where the scene is as follows. That's quite a story, Miss Clark, quite a story. Please, Mr. Alistair, he didn't know what he was doing. Why, he must have realized what it would mean. But he didn't. All he knew was that, that he wanted to make me happy. Well, I can understand that, yes. Yeah. Yes, I certainly can. In what way, Mr. Alistair? Well, a beautiful young woman. Dear, I suppose the story's been duplicated a hundred times. Mr. Alistair. Uh, what, Miss Clark? Here. Well, what's all this? Everything he gave me. And if you can't sell it for what he paid, I'll make up the rest. Huh? I will, Uncle Broadway, I will. Are you in love with Link, Miss Clark? I... I don't know. You don't know? But surely you well, wouldn't come here to I me. I don't know much of anything, Mr. Alistair. I, I'm all mixed up. I, I never knew anything like this could happen. I, his mother. <laughs> Is there a water cooler in here? I have got to have some water. Uh, yes, yes, certainly. But now, now Miss Clark, I... Uh, Miss Clark, uh, uh, please tell her to stop crying. Why not? She has got a good head start. Now, look, Miss, Miss Clark. Miss Clark, I'm sure we can arrange something. After all, the deficit is only about $200. That much? Well, now, that's not a great deal. But he'll go to jail for me. No, 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 perhaps not. Suppose I tell you I'll see what I can do. But how? What will you do? I won't prosecute. After all, he's very young, you're very young, and, well, we'll talk it over. Shall we? You will. You promise. I give you my word of honor. I promise you I'll never see him again. Never. Then he, 
He won't be tempted to, to do it again. All right. Now, you just stop crying. Those eyes are much too pretty to be clouded up like this. <laughs> Come on, smile for me. <laughs> smile. That's it. You're a wonderful man, Mr. Alistair. A wonderful man. <laughs> Mr. Alistair is also a very wealthy man. Now, I wonder where all this is leading. I find out one night in Mindy's when Silk comes in with Jewelry Joe. They sit down at my table, and Silk says... What's the matter, Broadway? Nothing. Why? You look sour. Okay, so I look sour. Sprinkle me with sugar. Mad at me? No. Look at this. Pretty? Where do you get that? It's an emerald. Is that right, Joe? This is an emerald which is strictly not slum. I will lay better than six to five that this moves Alistair back at least two G's. Alistair? Why not? Well, you know what kind of a citizen he is. Sure I know. I've got him all pegged out. Stay away from him. Why? What would your father say? Want me to tell you? This emerald is strictly not slow. You shut up, Joe. She asked my opinion. I give it her. I'll tell you what Dad would say, Broadway. He'd say, take everything, give nothing. I've never forgotten that. What kind of a score are you trying to run up? A real big one. And Alistair's the rack to run it up on. You are talking like a cheap chiseler. An emerald worth 2000 isn't cheap. Who is talking about the emerald? You're sore. Sure I'm sore. Why? Look, Silk, I am around the stem for more years than you are in the world. I see lots of guys and dolls come and go. High shots and then little fish. Sooner or later, they come up against something they cannot handle. And it beats them. I can handle Alistair. Sure you can. But can you handle yourself? When I can't, chalk up a miscue for me. But you'll never see the day. Well, that is that. Silk takes aim and fires away at Alistair. She never misses. And it is not long before everybody is talking about the score she is running up. Then we hear that she takes a trip to Europe and is gone a year before we hear she is back. Maybe a week after, I and Professor D get a call to go see her. We do, and she is just as beautiful as ever. But she has something on her mind. Professor, take a quick look over these papers and see if they're in order. Well, what are they, Silk? You'll see when you look at them. Oh, very well. Excuse me, I'll go over in the corner. What is on your mind, Silk? Alistair is coming here. Oh? Why do you want us here? <laughs> it won't be as unpleasant this way. There is something wrong, huh? Not with me. No, Broadway, I've got nothing to... Oh, that's Alistair. Oh, stay sitting, Broadway. The maid will let him in. Sure. And no matter what he says or how he acts, don't go. If you say so, Silk. Silk! Silk! We've got to talk this over. Yes, of course. You know my uncle. You said you were alone. I was when you called me on the phone. You said you'd be alone. So I've got company. Oh, uh, the gentleman in the corner is Professor D. I don't care who he is. Silk, you've got to listen to me. Are those papers in order, Professor? Why, yes, they are. Quite legal, as far as I can tell. They're absolutely in order. Which means I own this apartment building. You what? Silk. That's right, Broadway. Everything I've got is in my own name. Silk. Now I'll tell you why you want to be alone with me. Broadway, Professor, it seems Mr. Alistair dipped into some funds that weren't his. Shut up. Why? It'll be in all the papers in a day. But it doesn't have to be if you'll help me. Silk, look. I've got time to cover myself if you'll go along with me. How? Give me enough money and to And what'll get... that leave me? You won't be sorry. I know I won't. But we've got to hurry. Oh, no, you've got me wrong. I'm not going to lift a finger. You... What? That's right. You can't touch a nickel I've got. But the jewelry, the furs... All in my name. You dirty little... I didn't ask you for them. You gave them to me. For what? For nothing. Can I help it if you got the wrong idea? Oh, Silk, Silk, please. I, I promise you, you'll get it all back. I believe that. Sure I do. <laughs> you'll get straightened around and I'll be left holding the bag. Nothing doing. It's not for myself, Silk. There are people who lose everything. You're thinking of that a little late. Yes. Yes, I guess I am. I guess I thought of a lot of things too late. All right, Silk. We'll let it go at that. I'm sorry I bothered you. Well, Silk, you're a very smart girl. Everything in your name. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? A few years ago, I didn't have a nickel. Today, what do you say I'm worth, Professor? In material things, Silk? The only things that matter. 
Roughly three million. Well, well. So you do run up a big score, huh, Sil? I'm satisfied. Sure. Come on, Professor. What do you say we run along? I guess so. There seems to be nothing here for us. The next day, the papers are full of the story. It seems some smart reporter gets hold of the real angle and Silk's picture gets all over the front pages. But like she says, she is clean. Nobody can touch her. Then it comes up that afternoon and Professor D asks me to go downtown with him to where Alistair's company is located. We get there and there's a whole mob of citizens banging around. But the doors of the place are closed. And no matter how the people yell and pound on the doors, they stay closed. Poor devils, the poor devils. Look at them, Broadway. All their savings gone. No hope for tomorrow. Some of them are pretty old, citizens. Yes, pretty old. Why do you want to come here? I sent word for Silk to meet me here. You what? Why? Maybe, maybe this sight will change her mind. You think it will? I don't know. Let's hope it does. I think you are whistling in the dark. Uh, maybe, but it's worth a try. Okay, then you can start trying, because here she comes. Hello, Broadway, Professor. Hello, Silk. Look around, Silk. What is this? The people who are going to lose everything. <laughs> and you've called me down here for this? I thought you might like to see it. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> Doesn't make any difference to me one way or the other. Look, Silk, there's an old couple over there waiting, waiting for those doors to open, but they won't open. Ah, cut it out. And that couple of kids over there near the windows, probably not more than 18, 19. I guess they got their scratch in there, too. I'm crying. I didn't take their money. Alistair did. But you could help them. Leaving me what? Well... What would I get out of it? Nothing. I'm getting out of here. Look, look, there's a the girl. Hey, look. Look, that guy spots oh, you. No. You know what? She's the one. It's look. her fault. She's get to the your one. car, Sil. Quickly. Hey, get her. She's the one. Get her. Come on. Let's get her. Come on. Where are the cops? We got no time to look for them. They can't do anything to me. Oh, can't they? They know it's your fault, They're Sil. They're crazy. Don't let her get away. Get her. Oh, Broadway, oh, Professor, Sil. help me. This way, Sil. Come on. Get your this way, Miss Clark. This way. Hey, who are you? Never mind. Come this way to my oh, house. Come on. Don't let her get away. Take your hands off of her. Get away from her. Follow me, mister. That house right there. Get her in there. Yeah, come on, Silk. Professor. You let her alone, Mr. Abrams. Get away, Mr. Broadway. Help me. Get him back of me, Silk. The old dame will hold him off. Come on. Come along. The old doll who comes out of no place bangs around her with a broom and gives the professor and me time to get Silk into the house. I have no time to think why the old doll is doing this. And then it is a couple of minutes later. Oh. Thanks. Whoever you are, thanks. Are you hurt, honey? No, not much. Just a little torn. <sighs> that is a pretty close call. Why, they would have killed you, Silk. Yeah. They would have killed me. But it's all right now, honey. It's all right. I'd, uh... I'd like to give you something for what you did. Give me some... Oh, oh no, no. Well, look, you did me a favor. I'll pay you for it. But I couldn't take anything from you. Why not? After what you did for me. What are you talking about? I've never seen you before in my life. Look, I've kept your picture. This one. I always hoped I could do something for you. What is this? Who are you? My name is Mrs. Link. Link? Link? Yes, don't you remember? Simon Link's mother. For a minute, Silk just stares at the old doll. So do I. Then Silk tells the professor and me to go, and we do. It is not until the next day that I get the payoff, which I will tell you in a minute. up the next afternoon and I am with Professor D and Mindy's. We are wondering what happens with Silk when she comes in and sits down. Hello, Silk. Hello. How are you feeling? Oh, just swell. Well, why are you looking at me like that? Are we? Yes. <laughs> there is something funny? Uh-huh, me. I'm funny. How do you mean that, Silk? Take everything, give nothing. And that is funny? Sure. I saw my lawyer this morning... Seems I've got enough money to take care of things for those suckers we saw yesterday. Oh. You know what? I stayed with Mrs. Link for three hours yesterday. 
And all she talked about was how wonderful I am. Me. Maybe she's right, Sue. Sure. <laughs> Seems she got the funny idea I went to Alistair because I loved her son, Simon. I sacrificed myself to keep that boob out of jail. And Simon never told her anything different. But he could. Yeah, he could. <laughs> Why does one sucker have to do something nice? Nice enough to make a sucker out of a smart girl. It would be different yesterday if he tells her the truth. Sure. Hey, you have still got those old dice. Hmm? Oh, sure. I kept them for luck. What do you want me to roll? A natural. Seven. <laughs> Looks like a deuce ace to me. Craps. Well, how do you like that? The first mistake I ever made in my life. And so ends the famous Damon Runyon story, Broadway Financier. Listen in again next week for... The Damon Runyon Theater. The Damon Runyon Theater with John Brown as Broadway is directed by Richard Sandville and the story is adapted for radio by Russell Hughes. Vern Carstensen is in charge of production. This is a Mayfair production. ¶¶